The 1970s and 80s brought in a voice listeners could rely on at both KTIB and KHOM with the presence of Rick Luquette. Let's hear his recollections of working at both stations. Mr. Rick Luquette, how are you doing today? I'm oh, doing okay so far. Very good. Well, don't worry. This won't be like Mike Wallace in 60 minutes. Whatever. There we go. Well, tell me, uh, are you from this area originally? I grew up here. I was born in New Orleans. Okay. But, uh, we moved here when I was nine, mm-hmm. and I've lived in Lafourche Parish ever since, and still do. Mm-hmm. Uh, what uh, school, uh, high school did you go to? Edie White. Edie White. And uh, dare I ask, what year did you graduate? 1969, the first state championship year. Oh, very good. Help me out. Who was the coach at the time? Um, Pat Zush, I think. Okay. Lori Dupont was the quarterback. Ah, okay. So they bringing back memories already. Well, how did you uh, first ever get involved in radio? Was being a broadcaster a dream of yours as a kid? Actually, um, I got involved in radio because I was dating a girl who wanted to get her FCC license. And I wanted an excuse to go to New Orleans with her. Mm-hmm. So I went and got my license with her. Mm-hmm. And a few years later, when I needed a job, mm-hmm. I went to a radio station because I had a license. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, was it a station in New Orleans? No, it was in, uh, actually, that one was in Omaha. Well, how did you ever first get linked up here at KTIB? Well, the girl I was dating, her father was uh, the manager here, mm-hmm. and he offered me a job. Mm-hmm. Well, what was your uh, first position here? I originally started as an announcer, mm-hmm. uh, then became program director. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was actually the second time that I had worked here. Mm-hmm. The first time I worked here was while I was in college as a news stringer. Mm-hmm. I would cover the city council meetings. Okay. Um, well, what, what was your college major, by the way? Uh, education. Math. So basically, if it would have been for radio, there was a good chance you probably would have become a teacher. Yeah, most likely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, now you say you had two stints here. Uh, what did you Actually, I had three stints here. Wow. Okay, well, there I ask. How, how, why was there three different stints? Because well, you had uh, different opportunities elsewhere? Right. I was here, as, uh, as I said, as a news stringer while I was in college. Um, I came to work here full time in 1971 and um, stayed here for several months and then Channel 11 opened up at home Mm -hmm. and I left here to go to work in television. Mm -hmm. Uh, That didn't last terribly long Uh, and I was in and out of radio through KHOM for the next several years. ultimately came back here full-time as music director in 1976. Mm-hmm. And I was here three years as a music director before I went back to KHOM full-time as the news director. Mm-hmm. So they, so you kind of bounced around to the home a little bit? A little bit, yeah, but primarily with KTIB KHOM. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was uh, when Leterre Broadcasting owned it. I had worked here the first time under Delta Broadcasting. Okay. Well, speaking of Channel 11, because I do remember it. Uh, I was about three, but I do remember Channel 11. Uh, then you probably knew Garland and Robin Ed pretty well. I, I knew Garland very well. We had worked together at KJIN, mm-hmm. and then we worked together at uh, at Channel 11 also. Okay. Now, at the time, someone had reminded me, did Les Domain have a show at Channel 11 also? Yes, he did. Okay. What was it, mostly uh, music and variety? Les was, yeah, Cajun performers primarily. Mm-hmm. If my memory is right, the, what, the station only survived about a year and a half? It was, I think it was about two and a half years altogether. Okay. All right. Well, let me go down because you give me a lot of stuff to talk about here. But the one thing I'd like to do first is the you, – you've just worked with so many good people at both stations, obviously. And, unfortunately, I'm probably going to leave some people off because, you know, even though I've been listening to radio down here for a long time, uh, I'll go down the list, and you tell me, uh, for example, uh, the gentleman who owned both KTIB and KHLM for a good long time, Mr. Raymond Sada, he must have been a pretty good owner to work for. Raymond was um, a, a very professional man. He's a very good man to work for. Uh, he was very demanding. He expected his people to perform well. And uh, another gentleman, of course, who was established at both stations in the news department, Roy Vignair. Roy was, uh, well, actually, Roy was the program director. And, and music director. Uh, he was here originally under Delta Broadcasters. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Raymond left to found KHOM, he stayed at KTIB for a while and went to KHOM later and then ultimately returned to KTIB. Uh, one gentleman whose voice was heard and he did a lot of sports probably for over 15 years here, Roy Pugh. Yeah, Roy was uh, the station manager here during my third stint 
when I was here as music director, Roy was my boss. He was a station manager. Okay. One gentleman who I don't have on the list, but I think he, I'm not sure if you worked with him at KHMM or not, Kenny Berthelot. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, I, I trained Kenny on the board uh -oh. uh, the first night that Kenny was in radio. Mm. And I'm still in contact with him. Mm -hmm. He's still talking from time to time. Mr. Sadie mentioned this to me two months ago. Just to verify, is it true, Kenny Berthelot, he went to college to be a microbiologist? Uh, I truly don't know that. I know that uh, he went to a broadcasting school. But I don't know about his college degree. Okay. And another name, very well established here. I know you probably have good memories of Marie Bajeron. Oh, yeah. Marie, uh, actually, the first time that I met Marie, uh, I was a junior in high school, and uh, KTIB was still in what was later the first federal building and is now the sheriff's office. And uh, we had a small singing group of uh, myself, Smitty Noblock, and Lee Barker. And uh, we sang on Marie's show. I was in high school. Must have been a pretty big thrill. Uh, well, it was at the time, um, but I'd like to tease her about it for a long time after that. Mm -hmm. Well, now let's see, going down the list here. Well, one story I'd like to talk about that you mentioned, which I think is pretty unique, and it goes to show you how sometimes maybe radio has lost the personal touch that it seemingly had for decades. You mentioned here that you and a co-worker announced your engagements on the air at the same time, correct? There was a program that we had uh, every morning from 11.45 to 12 o'clock called Tradio. And it wasn't like anything that has come along since. It was, it was paid advertising, but the advertising was typed on index cards, and we'd read them. Um, an ad, I think, cost a quarter. And you could advertise your garage sale or if you had something for sale or something like that. And and we would, uh, Teela and I would sit next to each other and we would just goof off. And um, her her name was Teela Dufran at the time. And, of course, she subsequently got married. Tradio was there before us and it was there after us. But the most interesting thing about our time doing Tradio is that uh, she and I both announced our engagements live on the air, but not to each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, we became engaged at the same time, and we made it public together. Mm -hmm. Wow, pretty neat. Now, um, one gentleman I want to ask about, we just mentioned a few minutes ago, because to me, uh, he brought a lot of personality to radio wherever he went. Les Domain. Les, Les was um, a unique individual. Um, I didn't have a lot of contact with Les through KTIB or KHOM. My contact with Les was more through KJIN. Um, but, yeah, we had some encounters together and uh, seemed to cross paths several times over the years. Of course, my personal favorite uh, Les Domain story was the time uh, a lady called him saying she had a dog available for stud service, and his reply was, well, ma'am, is it a male or a female? <laughs> I hadn't heard that. All right. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of them we'll, we'll eventually yeah. dig up as we go down. Now, but, you know, as far as French music is concerned, my contact was more with Leroy Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, Leroy and I worked for years where I would work Saturday morning and he followed me in the afternoon. Uh, and also Rod Roderick. Uh, Rod never worked here, mm -hmm. but we worked together at, uh, at KJIN and also at KHON. All right. I take it, Leroy, he just, um, you know, all the years he did radio, especially on the weekends, he just must have been one heck of a dynamic personality himself. Yeah, and uh, Leroy was, I, I mean, uh, Les, well, all of them really, Les, Leroy, and Rod all did their thing their way. Uh, you don't see a lot of that in radio anymore. Okay. Now, the story I have to ask about, because it kind of caught my eye when you first emailed it to me, a, a lady who got herself started her career here at KTIB was Margaret Dubasson, who many of the younger people would remember later, of course, the Channel 8 news as well. It says here that uh, that you almost killed her on the first day of work. Now, how, what on earth happened here? Well, you have to understand the nature of the layout here at the station. Uh, at the time, we had a program called Dialogue was a half-hour interview show every day. And that particular day, uh, Marie was sick. So I was on the air doing the broadcast, but I was also going to do dialogue. So I was having to set up the dialogue, the microphones and everything else, while I was doing my board shift on the air. And there's a distance of, what, 30, 40 feet across the, the building. And um, I came barreling out of the door, and she felt the breeze as I passed. And I'm a little larger than she is. And if she had been one step farther, we may have never seen her again. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Oh, boy. <laughs> that was her first day working here in the news department. Wow. Well, at least she survived and bigger and better things and, like that. And we became friends after that, and, uh, you know, we've contacted each other over and over. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, another story which, well, I like to say this obviously was as a result of a very sad day. The Sunday after Elvis died, you were up here to do a, an all-request show on Elvis Presley's music, and I take it you probably got a swamp of phone calls about, you know, which song people thought was their favorite. Well, what we wanted to do, and my wife came with me that day, we wanted to, uh, uh, she's a much bigger Elvis fan than I am, we just wanted to go through his whole catalog. And um, being music director, I had the flexibility to do that. And people started calling in asking for specific songs. We didn't plan it that way. But since we had the ability to do it, we played what they asked for. And then people started calling and talking about Elvis and talking about what were their favorite songs. So we started a vote. Mm -hmm. And the two favorites were Love Me Tender and Jailhouse Rock. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one came out on top of that. It was pretty close. Now, by any chance, did you keep tab as to how many calls came in? Because I'm sure y'all were just swamped. We did then, mm -hmm. but that was an awfully long time ago. That was in 1977. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let, let me talk about some other things in, in radio. Did you, um, and forgive me, you may have answered it earlier, did you, you, did you also do a lot in news? I was the, uh, I did news on and off. I did uh, dialogue occasionally, but most of my news stuff was done at KJOM. I was the news director there okay. for about five years. Any certain stories during your window as news director that seemed to stand out more? Oh, Hurricane Juan, mm -hmm. um, which happened the same year as Hurricane Danny and Hurricane Elena. Mm -hmm. um, with three storms back to back and Juan in particular, uh, I barely came home for a week. Every time I started to come home, I'd get called back because the storm would turn around again. As we used to call it at meteorology school, Juan de loop de loop. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and that, the, the, one of the things that I remember from that, and uh, I still have it, uh, although I can't wear it anymore, uh, the Red Cross T-shirt from that had an alligator on his knees with his hands in prayer, and the caption read, Juan, hurricane at a time, please. Well, I tell you what, that was memorable to say the least because I remember uh, where we lived, we didn't live close to the coast, but because of the heavy rainfall, we were worried about rainfall flooding. My father had to raise the furniture and put it back down three times in five days. So our only saving grace, the water actually didn't go in the house. But I take it the other mess from one, if my memory is right, was the fact that because it stayed in our proximity for so long, coastal flooding from nonstop south winds, you know, probably got a lot of calls about people getting property messed up along the coast. Southern Terrebonne pretty much stayed flooded for a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a unique storm because it threatened Halloween. It was in late October. And that doesn't happen very often. But there was actually discussion in Terrebonne Parish, which was where I was at the time. I was working in Terrebonne. There was discussion as to whether Halloween would have to be canceled. Wow, pretty incredible. But like I said, late October storms that you said are so unusual that just you know, incredible circumstances, to say the least. Now, let me ask you this. if um, When was the last year you were in uh, radio? 1985. Okay. Was it one that, that got you out of it, or what was the reason for leaving? No, um, it was health. Mm -hmm. I had some health problems, and I needed to reduce stress. Mm -hmm. So what, did, what field did you end up going into afterwards? Computers, actually. Um, and I've been in the computer field ever since until last year when I went back into accounting. Wow. Which is where I started in the first place. Mm -hmm. Did um, When you were in computers, were you involved in sales or repair? or A little bit of everything, primarily network consulting. Mm -hmm. Do you do accounting work for yourself or for another firm? I'm working for a company in, in Alma now, a healthcare company. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a very famous comedian that started off as an accountant. Do you know who? Sure, Bob Newhart. Bob Newhart. Of course, we all know how exciting accounting could be, so he went into comedy. Well, I'll tell you what, before we forget, and I, um, you know, just so many good people down the list I, I don't want to forget along the way. Um, oh, yes, there is one gentleman I mentioned who uh, I'm sure you would have worked with at one time, Jimmy Cole. Oh, Jimmy and I, yeah, we, we were about the same age. We hung out together. We'd go dancing together sometimes. And, uh, and we worked together here 
Mm-hmm. Uh, what about Joe Wall? Do you remember him? Joe and I never worked together. Okay. Uh, we did have some contact with each other, but we, we were never actually in the same place at the same time. Same thing with Todd Power. Mm-hmm. Uh, Todd and I were, we knew each other, but we never worked together. Mm-hmm. David McNamara and I did work together. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave was at KHOM while I was at KTIB, mm-hmm. and we ran uh, an explorer troop mm-hmm. in, wow. in radio broadcasting together. Wow. Well, i tell you what. Um, is there, uh, like I said, you give me so much information to go down. Is there any other things you'd like to mention that maybe I didn't really uh, uh, capture yet? It was a lot of fun. Um, radio was different then from what it is now. It was much more personal. It was a much more, um, it was a local station. It was a Thibodeau station, which it still is. It's one of the few small town radio stations left. I hope it stays that way. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, no, there are two other things. Come to think of it, Mardi Gras, covering radio uh, where we are located here at 2nd Street with the parades passing by. Do you have any familiar Mardi Gras stories? Nothing, um, well, most of the good ones you can't tell on radio. Right. Uh, I remember one in particular where it must have been 40 degrees with sleet falling, and sleet on this balcony out here is, is really a trip. Mm-hmm. Um, we did Mardi Gras that year with Margaret. Oh, okay. And several times where we did broadcast with Marie. Mm-hmm. Um, over the years, I think both stations had various contests. Did, were you ever in charge of overseeing any of them? Never really. Uh, I, Never in charge of overseeing them. I did um, work the board during those. Mm-hmm. Um, I can remember some interesting contests. Uh, in particular, one that was at KHOM that uh, that Roy Vignair had designed, where uh, he had picked out a song and he just knew no one would ever guess what the song was, and the prize was 104,000 S and H green stamps. And he played three notes of a song on the radio, and the phone rang immediately. And the first caller knew the song, and it was my wife. And there were no rules published saying that that people from the station couldn't call in, so she didn't know better. And she won. Wow. And I do remember SNH Green Stance. Before the, the before, I think in Homa, they had an outlet for him. I think until 1980, the, for kids that may not know, uh, the green stamps, just like another store, I think had yellow stamps. Basically, you went to the supermarket, to, uh, and once you checked out, you got X amount of stamps, depending on how much you bought, and you'd redeem it down at, at the store when you got enough books, right? Right. You'd, you'd cash them in for prizes. All right. Now, you see, this is great, going down memory lane. Green stamps, boom. I'll remember that right away. By the way, do you remember what s and stood for? No, I don't. Uh, Sperry and Hutchinson. Okay. Now you can stop people at the office tomorrow. I would have thought of that eventually. Okay. Before we go, um, and you mentioned how fun radio was, is there anything you'd like to say uh, to our listeners out there? That um, I'm glad I'm still in LaForge Parish. I'm glad KTIB is still in here. And I hope maybe a couple of them remember me. Thank you very much. Thank you. On a closing note, one of the amazing stories involving Rick Luquette was during his days at KTIB in the 1970s, when he also served as an advisor to Billboard magazine on new country releases. Through the advice of his wife, he wound up being the only DJ to recommend that the Kendall's Heaven's Just a Sin Away would become a pick hit, and that song wound up making the American Country Countdown's top 50 hits of the 1970s. Rick Luquette, a radio personality that made a positive